This video provides a brief introduction to the order in which code executes to help us understand how programs of a bunch of lines of code run together. And at the most basic level, code runs from top to bottom. And so if we run a chunk of code, it will run the first line, and then the second line, and then the third line, and so on. And so that means that the order in which we write lines of code is important. So let's look at an example where we try to calculate the total number of animals in an area based on their population density and the total area over which that population density is being applied. And so to do that, we might write some code like uh, number, so that's our total number of animals. And then we're going to assign to that variable the uh, population density times the area. And then we need to know what population density and area are. So let's go ahead and on the next couple of lines create uh, vectors of population density and area. So we'll say population or pop underscore density is assigned a vector. And remember, we make vectors using the C function, which stands for combine. And so we'll say 2.8, 3.2, 1.5, 3.8, all separated by commas. And then we'll create some areas. So we'll say area is the assigned, is assigned the assignment operator. Uh, C for combine, parentheses, and then 3, comma 5, comma 1.9, comma 2.7. And so now I'm going to run this code. And the way I'm going to run it is by clicking on the down arrow by source over here and clicking on source with echo. And so that's going to try to run the entire file of code all at once. And what we'll see is that we actually get an error down here. And that error says object pop underscore density not found. And that's happening because the code executes from top to bottom. And this is how it works. When we run this code, the first thing that happens is that R looks at the right hand side of this top line of code. And it says, I need a variable called pop underscore density, and it goes to look up the value associated with that variable. But as we can see over here in the global environment, there is no variable pop density, and so it throws an error and stops executing. And that's because we haven't defined this variable yet. It is underneath uh, the first time we use it. And so we have to rearrange this code so that the lines that depend on defining other variables come after those variables are defined. And so we're going to put these two vectors, uh, these vector assignments, before we do this multiplication. And now if we run this code again, everything works. And that's because the way that it executes is the first line runs, this vector is created, it's then assigned to the variable population density, and it'll show up in the global environment. Then the second line runs, the right-hand side, this vector is created, it's then assigned to the area variable, and will show up over here in the global environment. And then when the third line runs, the first thing it does is it looks up the value for population density. So it gets this vector and it puts it in here. It then looks up the value for area, this vector, and puts it in here. And then it multiplies those two vectors together and assigns the resulting vector to number. One thing that can happen uh, if we are uh, running code in a different way is that some lines can run even if 
the lines above them didn't run. And so I'm going to click the broom here. That's going to empty out our global environment so we can run this like we're starting again. And if I go back to the way that the code was initially written, and I select the code and click the Run button, what you'll see is that we still get this error, pop density not found, but it then goes on and runs the other two lines and creates them in the global environment. And this can be confusing because if I now do the exact same thing again, I don't get an error. And that's because we had previously run these lines, and so the variables had been created in the global environment. And so when this line was run the second time, pop density and area were both in the global environment for it to work with. And so this means a couple of things. One, when you want to check whether code is really working, uh, you should click this broom to clear out your global workspace and then run it. And two, it's probably a good idea to run source with echo uh, instead of just highlighting a chunk of code and running it when you want to do your final checks to see if everything is working. And so we'll see that this code isn't working, even though it looked like it was working just a minute again. That's a basic introduction to how code executes in R and the potential pitfalls of having accidentally uh, executed some code before the final version and therefore having values in the global environment that change how it looks like your code is actually running. But if we run this, it runs in order from top to bottom. And what we'll see is that we get an error. And so it says error object area not found. And that's because the way this code executes is it starts on the right hand side. Why the hell did it not error on density? because it's like a forking keyword. <laughs> oh my God. Of course it is, right? Uh, <laughs> it's a function, so my example is broken and confusing.